This conference will now be recorded. So good afternoon, everyone. I want to first of all echo Tay's sentiments and uh, thanking you for being here. Uh, I'm confident that after the next hour, you will be much more aware of the products we have and how they can fit into your market. We've got something that is very unique and we uh, want to share that with uh, North America and myself and Diego Stephanie are charged basically with starting the business up here in the US. And uh, so far it's going amazingly well, even given this uh, crazy virus thing. So uh, first I'd like to introduce myself. And my name is, is Jack Bartell. And I've been, uh, I am the manager for technical services for North America for Olympia Splendid. And there you see my uh, email address, just j.bartell at olympiasplendidusa.com. And that phone number there is the 800 number that goes directly, uh, basically when you call that number and hit option one, it just rings my cell phone. So uh, I'm, if you have any issues with application, troubleshooting, installation, parts, warranty, that all falls into my uh, basket. Sales questions and, and POs and things, those will go to uh, Diego Stephanie, but, uh, Technical is what I will handle. So this is my 50th year in HVAC. I spent 16 years with York International. My final position there was director of uh, service and training, or the director of training. And I spent 15 years with value added distributors. Uh, they were, when I joined them 15 years ago, they were an $85 million distributor. And when I left back in, excuse me, when I left back in August, they were $187 million distributor with branches in 20, uh, 20 branches in seven states. And again, I was director of service and training. I spent 10 years with a large contractor in New Jersey, which is where I'm originally from. And nine years prior to that, I was a service technician, just basically learning my trade. I've been fortunate enough in this career to uh, be a part of a number of committees. And as you can see here, I sit on the Nate Technical Advisory Board PARA, which is the Partnership for Air Conditioning, Heating, Refrigeration, Accreditation, RSES, and ACCA. So if you ever have questions or, or things that you need from any of those organizations, please don't hesitate to let me know where I can help because uh, typically when it comes to something you might need from any one of them, I know the people to call that will make things happen. So uh, I offer that to you if you have any need. And then I also like to tell people about myself in that I do two things basically. I work and i fish so uh fishing is kind of what i do when i'm not uh, sitting in front of a computer uh in fact this uh middle picture here was uh something that this was from in the middle of february down in florida so uh that's what i like to do so if you find yourself in uh, southeastern virginia uh do yourself a favor give me a call we will uh, fire up the boat, head out, do a little fishing. We'll talk about heating and air conditioning while we're out there. And then I can charge the fuel to Diego. So it all works out good for everybody. <laughs> that is my current uh, ride that is actually on the market. And this is the boat that I bought just three days ago. So that boat there, I can take 100 miles offshore for tuna, mahi-mahi, and I plan to live on it for four months a year, starting in December, taking it down the intercoastal to Florida. So anyway, that's my, my goal. <laughs> so before we talk about the product, I think it's important to understand the, the company, because many people are probably not familiar with, in, in, in North America, aren't familiar with the company Olympia Splendid. They've been selling products since 1963. I'm sorry, 1956 uh, is when they first opened. They've been manufacturing heat and air conditioning products ever since. It's a family owned business, about 230 odd employees. And their production facility is absolutely uh, second to none. And I've seen production facilities all around the world. So uh, they do a great job. And I'm gonna talk a little bit coming up about the, uh, the warranty ratio that they have. And it's absolutely spectacular. The, quality is absolutely stunning. This gives you a quick idea of our uh, global footprints. We have representation 
on four continents. We expect uh, and we're in negotiations now to do some some work in, in Africa as well. Uh, we do an awful lot of business in, in uh, uh, the, the Jamaica and the, all the islands along the, the you know United States uh, southeastern uh, uh, area. A lot of business in South America and Australia is ramping up quickly. So uh, we, we are out there. We're not a Johnny Come Lately company. We've been there for quite some time. So the product that we are most proud of at this point is what we refer to as the Maestro product line. Now that currently has two uh, sizes. So we have a Maestro Smart, which is 9,212 BTUs of cooling, 8,600 of heating. It's a single stage compressor, a rotary compressor that's on, off, on, off. And then we also have the Maestro Pro, which is 11,600 BTUs, 10,600 BTUs of heating, and it is a inverter driven. So we'll get to that product next. We're gonna start off with the Smart. So the thing that's most unique about this product is it's completely self-contained, and the only thing that you see on the outside of the building after installation is these two eight inch grills, okay? So everything else is contained inside the house. Depending on where you are, you might also see a, a, a small one there for a, a, a drain as well. And I'm gonna talk about the need for a drain. Uh, and as you can see, this one was actually placed uh, just below a window. But if we go over to the other side here, so upper uh, right-hand side, you can see two grills here also installed below a window. But on the next, on the right-hand side, on the second picture, you can see a series of these grills and each one of these apartments had one installed high on the wall. So the point here is you can install this equipment either four inches from the ceiling or four inches from the floor or anywhere in between on an outside wall. So we're gonna talk about that, that uh, it, it must be installed on a wall that communicates with the outside. And I've just got to erase these little pictures here. So it is an Italian design. It is manufactured and designed in Italy. It is a, a very unique design. I'm going to talk to you about the, the patent that's on it. Uh, it uses a uh, what they call Pure System 2 for uh, filtering and very easy maintenance because all it requires is at the top of the unit, you lift up a, a, a hinge door and you can access the filters quite easily. So the only maintenance that's required on a regular basis is of course the filter. And then once a year, it should be serviced to make sure the coils are clean and the drain system is clean as well. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you will see uh, a look at the remote control. Now, I'm going to talk about that in a little more detail coming up, but the remote control is Fahrenheit only. And that's one thing we need to make sure all of our uh, folks up in the north are aware of is that when you buy a smart unit, the, the remote control will only display in Fahrenheit. And if you want Celsius, then you need to order that as an accessory. On the pro model, it's either Celsius or Fahrenheit. So uh, you'll no worries there. So it is a patented design. And, and one of the things that you got to remember is in, in Italy and in France and uh, many of the European countries, you cannot mount a unit like a mini split outdoor unit or put a, a window unit in a wall. They won't allow it because it just destroys the architectural feel of the building. And, and so they don't allow that, but they do allow that's why this was originally designed and marketed in the uh, in in Italy and and all of Europe because people could get air conditioning and heating affordably without having to uh, do all this refrigeration work and and have very little impact on their building. The warranty is seven years on the compressor, two years on parts, and if a compressor fails within the first year, we just give you a new unit. 
but then you'll have to send that unit back to me or to a local uh, service center that we might uh, 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 approve of. And, and then it has to be tested because there are over half a million, half a million of these units are already installed throughout the world. They've been installed for up to 20 years now, okay? So there have been only two compressors returned to the factory over that 20 year period. Both were analyzed to find that they had been struck by lightning. So you know, to me, that's a pretty darn good warranty. And, and many of you have probably uh, heard from other vendors what their warranty to sales ratio is. So for the Maestro product that's been out there for so long, a, a sales, a warranty to sales ratio typically is a combination of three metrics. Parts that fail within the first 30 days, parts that fail within the first year and parts that fail within the first five years. So with almost 20 years of history into that metric, the warranty ratio for this product is 0.002%. And that is absolutely phenomenal. When I worked for a manufacturer, if we had a warranty rate that was less than 2%, we thought we were geniuses. So this is a couple hundred times better than that. So it's really amazing. Now these values here that you see, STC and OITC, you may not be familiar with those, but STC is sound transmission class. OITC is outdoor indoor transmission class. In the US, there are many cities who will not allow you to install anything that will impact the wall negatively to allow more noise to get into the space. So these, these two uh, ASHRAE numbers were developed and these cities each have their own level that they say, okay, you can't sell your unit unless it's been tested and validated to be above this number because the higher the number, the better. So STC is sound transmission uh, class and both our pro and our smart are rated at 36. OITC, both the pro and smart are rated at 25. No one can beat those numbers. That is the best number that these tests will allow for. So someone at some point might get close to us or even match it, but nobody can do better because basically this unit does not allow any additional noise from the outside to the inside after you've installed it. And, and to me, that's a great selling feature, okay? So let's talk about the installation. And I don't think you'll find any unit that is easier to install than a Maestro product. So basically every unit comes with everything you need to install it. The only thing you may have to source locally is if you're, uh, depending on the material of your wall, the, uh, the, the anchors that come with the unit may not be appropriate for your wall, but everything else comes with it. So there is a template that opens up that ships with every unit. It's about 36 inches by 24 inches. And you place that template on the wall. And again, it's an outside wall. And then you, you level it and put it where you want your unit to be located. And there's a look at the uh, template itself. And I wanted to point out here that there are the holes that you have to drill or cut for this unit are either eight inch round. You see here, just eight inch or 6.4 inch, okay? And you see both holes are laid out here for both the air uh, intake, which is what you see here on the right, and the exhaust is what you see here on the left. So you can install this unit with two eight inch holes, an eight inch duct, or if your geometric constraints on your job won't allow for two eights, you'd have to go with two 6.4s. Now you do lose a little bit of uh, efficiency and a little bit of uh, capacity, but it's very, very minor. I mean, it's measurable, but it's not significant. So the thing to keep in mind is uh, if at all possible, you wanna use those eight inch holes and not the, uh, the six inch holes. 
and then you'll also see over here uh, on the smart here's where your uh, drain will be on the pro it's kind of more over here okay but the the, the uh, template for each of them will properly mark that for you okay So after you make those two holes, you put the bracket on the wall. And there you see the bracket on the wall. And then you have to install the duct work. In other words, you have to have a duct that goes from the outside wall to the inside wall so that your, your uh, air streams uh, are, are isolated to just going into the condenser area and out of the condenser area. So you, you, you basically take duct work and put it in the wall. And the duct work ships with the unit. So oh, went too far. That's the ductwork. It's just a flat piece of composite plastic that rolls up, and there you have an eight-inch duct. Okay. So you put a seam across the uh, inside of that. You know, a, a you put a piece of tape, good tape on the top and bottom of that of that where it crosses over and you now have a properly sized duct. You cut the uh, the duct about an inch and a half shorter than the total width of your or depth of your wall from the outside wall to the inside wall. And and they, then you install it, you make sure you keep the seam to the top and you're done. Your your duct work is finished. So once the duct work has been installed now you have to uh, install the grills, both the outside grill and inside ring. Okay. Now, if you if you're doing this on the first floor, that's not a problem, right? But if you're doing it on the second, third, fourth, or fifth floor, that can present a problem. How do you get outside to put the grill on? So this is a very unique part of this application: is the grills for outside fold in half. They're on a hinge. So you fold the grill in half. First, you put the uh, the spring and chain on, and these are clips that go onto the grill. And so you have the you have the spring and chain on your grill that folds in half, and then you just push it out through the hole, fold it in half, you let it go, and it opens up again. And then you use the springs and the chains to attach it to the inside ring. And you're done. <clears throat> you don't even have to go outside. Here you see the uh, uh, anchors for mounting the unit. But again, if your wall material is not designed for use with this kind of, uh, of, a, of a bolt or anchor, then you need to find something locally to ensure that wall will hold 86 pounds or 88 pounds. And there you see the grills and the, and the uh, rings. So you have an inside, uh, I'm sorry, you have a inside ring and an outside grill for your intake and an inside ring and an outside grill for your exhaust okay and and down below here you see a uh, that's actually the bracket that the unit mounts on okay and this is the remote control upper left you see it has uh a, a little sliding door that gives you access to more of the features and then but as i pointed out earlier this is <clears throat> a fahrenheit only control so if you want celsius for your market that's an accessory that needs to be ordered up and the unit comes it's 115 volts so once you put the ductwork in you plug it into the wall boom you're done so nothing else needs to be done at that point And this is a uh, GFI outlet, by the way, or GFI plug, so it, it protects you know the unit from overcurrent and under voltage. Now, if you have a glass application, <clears throat> not a problem. We've, we've got a, a building in Toronto that has these installed, and it's basically the local contractor fat sourced a plastic grill that matched you know that blended in nicely with the window and then they cut the holes out with a glass cutter 
they made this frame, which then the unit can mount on. And then you see from the outside, nothing but the two small grills. So uh, this is just, just a point to be made here is that there are plenty of uh, different types of applications out there. And if you want help with that, that's what my job is. I can come up with a solution for you for, for many, many applications. So don't hesitate to call me when you need something. And this graphic here basically shows you where the condensate you know, gets uh, pumped on down to the uh, condenser coil. You have your condenser air in and condenser air out. Unfortunately, this graphic is actually the, uh, the old model smart. So when you're looking at the unit from outside, you see the two holes on the current product, the intake is on the left and the exhaust is on the right, exactly opposite what you see here but the function is, is, is the same. So this just shows you connecting those springs and, and uh, chains you know, through the wall onto your ring and everything just holds itself in place. And you should also take note that when you drill your outside wall, it should be slightly lower than the inside hole so that the, there's a pitch in the duct that goes to the outside. In case any rain gets in there, it just runs right back out. And we always tell folks that you can only use a factory supplied grill or a third party grill that we have approved of or have sourced because this job <coughs> was installed with this uh, rectangular grill that did not have the surface area or free area that the unit uh, original had and it would be tripping on uh, high pressure because it wasn't moving enough air through the unit. So you can't just pick up any grill. We are currently working with a couple of manufacturers to get rectangular grills made. And we're, we're looking at having a grill that you'd have two rectangular grills, just like you have two round, or we'll have one large grill uh, that you would see. So, you know, we're trying to come up with a few different options. The other thing you can't do is just add in any type of filter or mesh because the result on this job was uh, the, the, the mesh was not maintenance by the consumer and eventually it filled up and blocked the coil and before you know it, your unit's not functioning anymore. So I'm also working with a manufacturer in, uh, from, actually they're in China, that makes a various uh, number of uh, plastic grids and it will, my goal is to have a grid that I can put in there to help, you know, keep out geckos and other things. Uh, something that the consumer would have to know is in there and has to be cleaned once a year. Uh, and again, like I say, hopefully we'll have announcements on that in the, in the near future. The smart unit has a air distribution flap that can be configured for high wall or low wall. It comes from the factory. Uh, set up for low wall application. So if you're installing at high wall, then you would just uh, follow the instructions that are in the installation manual and flip, you know, take out the flap and flip it over. And now instead of it pointing the air up, which would be at the ceiling, the air would, would go down uh, based on the position of the flap. And then you can also have a a drain line that can be straight outside where it just drips outside onto the ground or you can do it inside and put it into a drain uh, it's designed to come out through the back of the unit or through the bottom of the unit so one thing to keep in mind is there is almost no condensate that comes out of this unit in the summertime because there is a float that when the condensate gets builds up enough <clears throat> this float closes a switch that energizes a pump and the water gets pumped up to the condenser coil where it basically drips down on the condenser coil, provides efficiency as well as capacity gains. <clears throat> so most of the condensate, generally all of it, is just re-evaporated and it goes out through the air as a vapor. So there's nothing to drip outside in the summertime. Now, if you live in 
South Florida, Louisiana, or, you know, that around, you know, they have so much humidity that you'd probably still have some coming out because you can only use so much of it. <clears throat> and another thing to bear in mind is in the wintertime, we don't use that pump because we can't use the pump to pump the condensate onto the outdoor coil, which is now the evaporator. So in the wintertime, we have to be able to drain the condensate that comes as a part of the defrost cycle. But okay. question? Yes, sir. Are, the, are there grills available with angled blades? Or are there any concerns for wind blown rain airing the stock grills? So there isn't currently one available, but I do have, I've, I've, I've kind of named it the uh, hurricane kit and the winter kit. So for many people, like for instance, up in Alaska, they we're, we're selling a pot load of them up there and, and they don't, they don't even care that it has heating. All they want is cooling. So what they would do in the winter time is they'll take the grill off outside and put this cap in there. And the cap is like, a, just think of an eight inch metal cap that you put on the end of a duct. This cap will have inch and a half duct board on the, on the inside. So basically when you take the grill off and you put this cap on, you're sealing off both those holes for, uh, you know, if you have a, and it's also what we're referring it to as a uh, hurricane kit for Florida, because in Florida, if you penetrate the wall for whatever reason, you must have a means of, of uh, blocking that up, you know, during a named storm. So this eight inch uh, cap with the insulation on the back is absolutely perfect for that application. Now, the point I wanted to make here before we leave the drain is you don't even have to drill a drain or have a drain. If you're in an area where you expect to have, say, a very little winter operation, and of course, if your humidity levels are, are not South Florida high, then you don't even have to run a drain line, okay? So what you can do is keep both of those drains, the one on the bottom and the one on the top, you can keep those blocked. And then if enough condensate builds to a level that is, uh, you know, say close to spilling over, the unit shuts off. There's a secondary uh, a float that turns the unit off so it doesn't provide any uh, water, it doesn't allow any water to drip out of the unit. So when that happens, it gives you a code, then you just open up the flap like you see there on the bottom, and you pull the plug out and you drain the condensate out, put the plug back in, close the flap, you're back in business, okay? So some people that have, and if you'll notice in the shots of the European uh, applications, almost none of them have the drain coming out because their humidity levels in, in wintertime aren't sufficient enough. And, and if, the, if it shuts off every few days or week, because of, of uh, any buildup, it's a five minute fix and some people choose that rather than uh, you know, another hole in their wall. So alrighty then, that is what uh, the Maestro Smart installation application ideas. So I'm gonna stop here to see if there are any questions that I might be able to answer. Yeah, if you just uh, don't mind unmuting yourself and ask questions. This will be perfect time, please. I see one question that was written here. Uh, let's see. Yes, we are working on grill options. Uh, the fact that the duck is pitched outside should help alleviate water coming into the unit. And again, uh, we have almost a half a million of these installed around the world, and, and that has not posed a problem uh, in, in any market that I'm aware of. So uh, that's why we put the seam of that duct that we put together to the top, so that if any water does go in, it just runs back out again. Any other questions? Hi, Jack, Tracy here. Yes, sir. Question on the eight inch grills. Those are the ones that come supplied with the unit. If we're right. going to the six and a half, does that need to be ordered as an additional component? <clears throat> it, it Typically it's not. So what'll happen is the six and a quarter or the six and uh, 
uh, 6.4 inch duct. Uh, then you put the, the grill in on the outside and then you just uh, put take your duct directly against uh, the, the the eight inch grill, okay? So we are, are looking again, we have a lot of options that we'd like to offer there and to have that, uh, you know, 6.4 inches is a pretty odd number. So we have to get, if you know, if people are gonna want the 6.4, we have to get the, uh, we have to get that manufactured. And we are, like I said, we are in, uh, negotiation with a couple of companies to do just that. But again, the 6.4 should only be used when there is no other choice. It should not be your first option. As long as you have the room for the eight inch, that's what you should have. So you're making sure you have the, the best capacity possible. And of course that holds true on both the pro and the, the smart. So the pro unit, <clears throat> Just came out in 2019. They're selling like hotcakes. And where I told you earlier that the Smart is a single stage on, you know, on, off, on, off compressor rotary. This is a inverter driven model. So it has the ability to control its capacity from 35% to 100%. It has ECM motor technology in the outdoor coil and the indoor coil. And because of that, it is, even though it's larger capacity than the smart, so physically they're, they're the same size, but this unit has 11,600 BTUs of cooling, 10,600 BTUs of heating, but it actually draws at full speed and high fan speed. It draws about a half amp less than the, the smart because it doesn't have lock rotor. It doesn't have any of the other you know, it starts up slowly and it only runs at the capacity required at that specific time. And so it's it's a, a marvelous, marvelous addition to the product line. And uh, we are, uh, like I say, they're, they're just, and of course the uh, STC and OITC numbers are identical to the SMART, meaning nobody can do better, okay? So here you see a couple of the features and the benefits of the inverter. Uh, driven model. Again, it is a heat pump. All these units are 410A. Uh, can be installed top or bottom, rotating flap, backlight display. Uh, again, there's a dehumidification mode. There is a fan only mode, an economy mode, auto mode, sleep mode, and silent mode. So sleep mode and silent mode allow, for instance, at night, you know, you're at your normal temperature at night, and then once you're in once you're in bed and sleeping over time it, it slows down the unit and the capacity if as long as it can maintain the temperature of the room where it wants and and it just makes it that much quieter to operate at night so uh, and again it does that all automatically once you set it for sleep mode now again one of the positive improvements here is the remote control is either Celsius or Fahrenheit. So as you can see here, uh, it is uh, just a button. You press a button and it's Celsius. Press the button again, it's Fahrenheit. So it makes your life a lot easier in your market for sure. And all these other uh, buttons here, you know, are sort of self-explanatory. And then this is a display of all the uh, icons. And so you can see what each of them mean so if you see, uh, you know, this uh, D5 here, this A, okay, that means you're in automatic mode, okay? And D14 is eco function is enabled, okay? So it just explains everything uh, so the uh, consumer, uh, you know, understands what their unit is doing at the time. This is something that's rather new is there is a lot of opportunity there for you to get a piece of that 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 retrofit market for p tax so there are a lot of p tax in the world and some of you have probably sold a great many of them but nobody really likes p tax from the standpoint of they're noisy and they're bulky and uh 
So they're they're not as well thought of as as something that is a much more modern design. Uh, so if you have an existing PTAC, the best thing to do is just leave the exterior shell in place, and you remove the obviously the PTAC out of there, and then you're going to install a six-sided box. I'm going to get out of this for a moment, and. Can you see that uh, retrofit kit? So basically, it's a six-sided box that comes shipped flat. You just have to tape it together. It takes all of about three minutes, okay? Now you have a six-sided cube that you just slide into the existing uh, shell for the PTAC, and you're leaving that grill in place. And now you're just going to mount your, your template on the wall, and you're going to... Uh, Cut your holes as you normally would. This is inch and a half duckboard. So essentially, when you what you have is a six-sided box with three inches of duckboard for sound attenuation and for uh, noise reduction. Okay, and 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 also for uh, insulation cap uh, uh, capability. So again, it's shipped broken down, and it will have this. Uh, each one will have this label that comes with it. That basically, if if let's say your installer is not really used to duckboard. Well, this tells them what the best safety precautions are when working with duck. And then it tells them how to put it together. And it takes, again, 10 minutes. So one of the applications I have in Miami that we just uh, had installed with these uh, kits is the, 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 the PTAC, the, the shell actually extends into the room about three inches. So that's not a problem. We just cut that three inches off right at the wall. And then the unit mounts on the wall like normal and you no longer see the, and so the hole is well insulated and sound attenuated. So this is, I think gonna be a, a good, uh, we're gonna have these on the market for, uh, for you folks to purchase in one of two sizes, because typically there's, you know, the, uh, the 32 inch uh, uh, PTAC and there's the, 30, or I think it's uh, 42 PTAC, but uh, we will have kits for both of those for retrofit. Uh, <clears throat> so that Mitro uh, Smart or Pro, either one can use this. Uh, this kit. Okay, so we did not go through the installation requirements for the Pro because it's the same as the Smart, so it would just be redundant. But that is the information on the Pro. Uh, again, when we're finished today, I'm gonna you'll provide you a link to this presentation so that you can view it, or if you had someone that wasn't able to make it today, they can view it. But you're also going to get a link to download a zip file that contains all of the tech guides and wiring diagram and parts list for, for both the Smart and the Pro. So any questions here? I'm looking up top here, it looks like. Let's see if there was another question in the... Uh, the chat room here i don't think so all right so uh what's coming down the road so that's our maestro product and of course uh, olympia splendid has other things that they offer as well that we think you may have some interest in and we're not going to cover them in a great deal of, of uh, uh detail but you need to know they're there because i think there's going to be stuff that you're going to like coming down the road so this is the maestro twin now this is an outdoor i mean this is a self-contained unit of Maestro that mounts on an outside wall. And then you run refrigerant lines and electrical line from the main unit to the uh, fan coil that gets mounted in another room. So now the unit can split its capacity between those, between those two uh, rooms and, and you can cover more ground uh, and then have a more comfortable space uh, with having a, that, you know, and this will be very similar to say a 
a multi-zone mini split where you run you know your refrigerant lines you know you, your power to the unit goes to the main unit and then you run communication line and power to from that unit to the indoor unit and we're kind of looking forward to that as our next uh release I, originally i thought we'd see this before the end of the year but because of this coronavirus i think we're going to be losing four or five months of 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 uh, R and D, so it's likely we won't see this until second or third quarter of next year. But you know, it's uh, we're doing the best we can. Another product that proves uh, to be quite attractive to folks is what we call our B two air or B two line, and these are low profile fan coil units for hot water and or cold water applications. So if you have a building that has a chiller or, and a building that has a, 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 or a boiler, you can get uh, a very attractive low profile fan coil that you, know, you can uh, increase the heating and cooling capacity of specific areas. So the thing to keep in mind about this is look at its, its uh, profile. It's 5.1 inches deep. So very little sticking out into the room, and you know it can be as much as 64 inches long, but uh, it will always be only 5.1 inches coming out from the wall. And again, it's ultra slim. You have low temperature radiation, heating, cooling, dehumidification. So this could be a uh, a two pipe system for hot water or a two pipe system for chilled water or you can have both the hot water and chilled water coil in the unit and now you have the ability to very effectively dehumidify so if you have a, a boiler and a chiller in this building you're set up with some very very good uh opportunity to uh control that that comfort in that space we also have what's known as the the, the uh, b2 smart and again you can see it's uh, dimensions down here, 5.1 inches also for your uh, D width outside of the, uh, you know, how it comes off of the wall. And again, these can be installed high or low. We also have what we call the B2 Naked. Now, the B2 Naked basically mounts inside the wall. So it goes into the cavity of the wall, and the only thing you see on the outside is the grill. Again, a very attractive option for spaces that don't like having too much, but you know, sticking out of the wall, you know. And you can have this uh, installed so that all you see is the grill, or you can have it installed horizontally, where you see the grill uh, for the supply here and the grill for the return. And again, we have accessories for these things, such as, uh, you know, recess kits, white panels, suction kits, and telescopic plenums. So we plan on having a full feature. Uh, and then you can turn it on and off directly on the unit itself, or you can use the remote control that it comes with. And you also have the option of a display panel, and it can be both uh, Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi ready. And this just shows you some of the components internal uh, to the B2 Air, trying to give you a little breakdown of, of what it looks like on the inside there. So again, that's our B2 product line. Uh, any questions on that, or do you see any applications that you might that might fit your markets? Okay, I'm not hearing any questions, so we'll move on to our last product, which is Dolce Clima. Now, this is a line of portables. Again, these are designed in Italy and manufactured to provide solutions for both commercial and residential customers. You know, people having a comfort issue in a single room or with rooms, uh, you know, businesses, long or short term issues that are the rooms aren't used that often. But we we've been selling an awful lot of these to contractors 
who then offer them to their customers if their unit breaks down. So let's say you go to a customer's house and they have a three ton split system, whatever. Uh, compressor's failed. It's an old system, we need to replace it, but we can't do it for three days or two weeks. So the contractor includes in his quote, the ability to bring a half a dozen of these to the house, you just stick it in the window, I'm sorry, you, you know, put it in the room, plug it in, and then there's a six inch duct that comes off the back that goes out through a window. So if you see this uh, over the right hand side here, that's the kit that comes with it to allow it to go out through the window. And uh, we have three sizes. We have the uh, Dolce Clima Compact, which is a 10,000 BTU model. We also, and that's just the specs that come with it. So, you know, the specification sheets will be in the link that you'll get. Uh, we also have the Dolce Clima Pro 14 heat pump or HP. And that is a heat pump with 14,000 BTUs of cooling, 11,000 BTUs of heating. And there are the specs for it. And then we also have the uh, Air Pro 14 AC. So AC only, no uh, heating on that unit. And again, there are your. So that is pretty much the end of my formal presentation. But I did want to show you a couple of things first. We've still got a few minutes here. We're inside our hour. Uh, one of the things I've done is created a parts list. When, when we got all the parts here in the US that are required, uh, I created a parts list where I took a picture of every part and put the part number next to it. And then you, so you can look at this document and if somebody brings you in, uh, say this uh, on this four way, but, hey, I need one of these dangly things, okay? Well, this gives you, a, you can see what it is and you can see what its part number is for ordering it up, okay? So everything is identified very clearly as to what it is. So this will be in your packet as well. I think I had one other. Of course, I spoke about this earlier, uh, you know, the demo that I built, and I think most people were here when I talked about it, but this is a four by four wall that allows you to do a demonstration on the unit uh, with your customer. Uh, it, it costs probably, you could do this for less than $300. Uh, and the way I, I designed it and built it, it breaks down to where it just goes on top of your car if you need to. I drove back from Florida to Virginia with that thing on the top of my roof. So <laughs> uh, it's designed to be transported easily. I mean, if you have a pickup truck, you don't even have to take it apart. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna open it up again now for any additional questions or comments. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I also, this presentation here is about 160 some slides. And I have uh, a great deal of those slides that we didn't use today because those are the installation, you know, the nuts and bolts stuff. But when you sell to a contractor, uh, you may want to make arrangements to have a webinar with them so that they can see exactly what needs to be done for the install. And, and I'm available basically any time to do webinars. So uh, at some point when the travel restrictions are listed, uh, you know, I could certainly come up there and we can do some, uh, some customer visits. Uh, we can do some some demonstrations. Uh, but I would only request that it not be when you have all that snow on the ground. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, this, is, this is Tay. Um, just so you know, um, Proctor Sales is inventorying the Maestro Pro unit. And uh, we will have a few of these units installed in our office and in our, and two in our training room. So Excellent. if you want to uh, see for yourself uh, in person, you are more than welcome to come here. And they are very, very quiet, just so you know. And, and uh, in fact, the uh, we are installing one 
of them right now in the in the uh, training room. And um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say there's nothing better for someone to it's one thing to show it to them, but for them to see it in operation, that goes a long way. Yeah, and uh, we we are a, uh, uh, took this thing apart, you know, nuts and bolts in our warehouse to just look at everything. And it's, it's very, very simple, like Jack says. And uh, like uh, like I said, again, you are more than welcome to come over here, just uh, contact me, Tracy Adams or Troy Nybert, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, set up a time for you to uh, to look at it in person. And uh, I guess other than that, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Jack is showing the uh, parts breakdown sheet with everything, uh, an, an exploded view of all the parts and pieces. And it- That will be in your packet as well. What's that? I said this, this uh, exploded view with all the parts will also be in the packet that you get from me uh, for downloading. Correct. So uh, I guess that is all that I have. If you guys have any last minute questions, um, here's your chance. Yeah, this is Adam from RSA Engineering. I guess I'm curious about pricing and I apologize, I jumped in about 15 minutes late. So if you already covered that, you know, no. maybe I can just get that personally, but I, I just be curious to have an idea what our price point is on these compared to others. Okay, so um, right now our plan going to market is we're, we're, we're gonna work with uh, wholesalers to have inventory of this also. So uh, I guess for right now, we're, we're test, uh, testing the, the, the field. The uh, Maestro Pro unit that we current in, in currently inventory is 2,700 bucks to the contractor. Now, if you compare that to a, uh, uh, a unit that requires an outdoor unit, then you're looking at this this unit is 120 volt single phase. And I believe in, in the little research that we've done, the uh, uh, other units with the outdoor units require 230 volt single phase. So that's gonna be a savings itself uh, in electrical, you know, uh, change of the panel or, or whatever. And uh, uh, overall, the installation costs between this and the other unit, uh, you know, with, with the unit itself is, is a wash. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks, Tate. That's helpful. Yeah. And, I, and I put my, just to end this real quickly, uh, I put my cell phone number up there. And if you have any application questions, any uh, special need applications, please don't hesitate to call me. I'm an early riser, so I'm on the East Coast time. I'm usually up at uh, 6 a.m. and working at my desk and I tell people that they're welcome to call me anytime if I don't answer it's usually for one of two reasons I'm already on the phone or I am 60 miles offshore chasing tuna and I don't get cell service out there so but I will return your call <laughs> and he does <laughs> I'll vouch for that so, right. uh, again thank you very much for your time uh, I know you guys are busy, so uh, again, contact Tracy Adams, Troy Niver, Tay Epperson, or Jack Bartell if you have any questions. We're more than happy to help you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.